Atelier Sophie was a game that had been at the top of my backlog for a long time. I began my Atelier journey with Atelier Lydian Soul, the third entry in the Mysterious Trilogy, and after I knew I loved that game and Atelier, it was a no-brainer that I needed to play Atelier Sophie as the first one, so I'm very happy that the Mysterious Trilogy was released in its DX form so I could finally have an excuse to play it and learn about the characters and world that this trilogy starts off with. If you enjoy the colorful alchemy characters and worlds that Atelier is known for, Atelier yes, Sophie has plenty of this to offer, featuring a colourful new take on synthesis, a new group of lovable and interesting characters to follow with plenty of events to find, and some gorgeous character designs thanks to a collaboration between two great artists. And if you enjoy the game flow of Atelier, it works just as well here with some new additions that make it both more complex and interesting if you don't mind balancing a lot of different things. With the game flow of Atelier and the fun events that I love, it was another Atelier game that was easy to get immersed in during my over 50 hours with it, and for the Atelier fan of its complex systems and fun worlds, Atelier Sophie is ready to give all of this and more, both with its core content and its new DX features. Our new protagonist in this atelier is Sophie, a young girl living in a small town called Kirchenbell, running an atelier using the alchemy she learned from her late grandma. At the beginning of the story, she has a lot to learn, even struggling to make basic medicine recipes, which prompts her to rummage through her messy atelier to try and find her grandma's old book of alchemy notes. She doesn't quite find what she's looking for, but she does find one book she hasn't seen before with blank pages, where she writes down the recipe she remembers, and upon returning to the atelier after delivering the item, she finds that this book is now somehow talking and flying and has a serious case of amnesia. This book called Plafta knows a lot about alchemy though and offers to teach Sophie, which happens to work out well as writing more recipes into Plafta seems to bring back her memories. So with the two of them working together to help each other, the mysterious journey of learning alchemy from a talking book begins, with plenty of secrets to discover both in alchemy and the history of this world as you play through its interesting story. As usual, Atelier Sophie features the signature Atelier game flow that I've come to love in its many games, and with no time limit in this one, you have the full freedom to play and synthesize at your own pace. You gather materials by picking up the ones scattered on its field, or sometimes by fighting monsters, then bring them back to the Atelier to synthesize items, and then rinse and repeat as the story gives you different goals. Although, like every new Atelier series, there are a few things in Sophie that make the system its own and feel like natural progressions that lead to the system's we see in modern Atelier. The Dusk trilogy took a step in the right direction by letting us easily adjust item effects, and Sophie makes this even more interesting with its new item placement system, where after selecting the materials to make your item, you can place them on panels, with different panels giving the effect level a boost, and if things are spread out well enough, you can get a significant boost to your item abilities. They can make the result in new and better skills that will help you get the best item possible, with even the possibility to go deeper as you can change your cauldron to get better panels, giving this system plenty of depth if you take the time to learn what works best. It can feel a little complicated, which I remember more from playing Atelier Lydian Soul, but in Sophie, since I played with it before and the effect system made more sense thanks to playing the Dusk trilogy, in Sophie I really liked this system, as it was a very visual way to try and get the highest percentages possible that rewarded you with better items for taking the time to do so. The visual element also seems like very logical progress towards the alchemy system we see in the current Rising games that also features a much more visual system, so playing with Sophie and the previous deluxe packs make it feel very cool to see this logical progression happen and the influences from games like Sophie in the alchemy system we see today. Battle, on the other hand, hasn't changed that much between Atelier Sophie and the previous game in the series, Atelier Shally, with a chain system being in place that keeps characters dishing out extra attacks between turns similar to the burst system in The Lost, with different chain levels allowing characters to do more, like special attacks or defending. The only main difference I felt is something I didn't use much, which was the offensive or defensive stances, with offensive making sure you hit your hardest and defensive making your character take less damage, and also defend other party members from big attacks. I tried to use these stances whenever you're supposed to, but the fact the game defaults to offensive stance and the enemies don't do that obviously about to do a special attack thing they do in Ryza meant I often forgot about this system in Sophie, with me only really thinking of it when I was really in a bind and and you 
Unfortunately, in those times, sticking to offensive seems like a better choice, as I was beyond the point of being saved by more defense, so it isn't really a system I felt like I got a lot out of in Sophie, but perhaps helps me understand why enemies do that thing in the Rising games, as it definitely helps me in those. Stances aside, in Sophie, I did still really like chain attacks, though, and liked how they encouraged me to keep my party as strong as my items so that everything could pack a punch both during and between turns, so I'm sure those who enjoy Atelier's other turn-based systems won't have a problem enjoying this one too, and the attacks in between make it feel active enough that I can see it appealing to newer fans of the series as well. Another of Atelier's core mechanics is gathering, which doesn't stray much from the last game, although I like how it visually shows you the materials as you're picking them up, as it made it exciting to see when you got a really high quality one. And the story flow features this visual element too, by giving you notes written by Sophie showing what you need to do both for the character stories and the main one, which was really nice. Although I did slightly miss being able to see which characters had events waiting for me as I went about my time around town, but I know that gets better in later entries. As you gather and go through the story, another helpful mechanic is a recipe idea system that makes gathering and exploring the world feel exciting, as there's always a chance of getting a new recipe. I like how they both popped up by surprise many times from what I was doing, and then you can also check the conditions and seek them out, and the sheer amount of them lets you pretty much always have something to do in this game if you want to try and collect them all, and I know I still have plenty to get if I ever come back to it. The only other mechanics I haven't mentioned so far is the equipment crafting that can be done at the blacksmith and the clothing store, with equipment this time having the potential to be really strong as you can fuse more materials into the item to get its maximum stats. This is where I actually tripped up in my playthrough though, as I found when I got to the final boss around the 35 hour mark, I hadn't done a lot to my equipment at all as I was so used to making stuff for battle in my Atelier like in newer Atelier games, meaning I had to spend a lot of time fixing my equipment, which also meant popping up many events as I was running around and finally resulted in me finishing at the 50 hour mark. I think I prefer the fact that in newer Ateliers you can just do this in your Atelier and any upgrade systems have a much smaller limit, even if it means there are more items on the synthesis menu as it just feels more convenient than the running around I had to do in this one. In saying that, I don't really blame Atelier Sophie for these extra hours as it's probably a mechanic I should have paid more attention to, and there are other mechanics to make it easier like the item duplication one I love, so I think they did their best to make using these mechanics as easy as possible, especially since all the locations are near each other too. So while Atelier Sophie isn't as streamlined as most modern Ateliers, there are a lot of interesting systems to make it stand out, and I definitely enjoyed this Atelier the appropriate amount more than Shally by the end of my time with it, with the fact that it is better in many areas thanks to it building on the mechanics introduced in the last game that I think will make it very accessible to those working their way back in the series, and since I enjoyed these systems and getting to know the lovable and sometimes lazy Sophie too, I'm glad it gave me the motivation to jump into the next one as soon as possible, as I think it's a good sign that I enjoyed this first part of the Mysterious Trilogy. The version I played of Atelier Sophie was the newly released DX one, which features the main game and a lot of its DLC, including costumes for features later in the game that made it fun to match certain characters with Sophie's new outfit. Sophie's new outfit in Sophie DX is a completely new addition not from DLC, and is the key to unlocking many of its events that give new, and at least for the Japanese dub, voice scenes, where it can be seen how this outfit inspires Sophie to be more like her grandma. I love this costume a lot and loved running around with it in my play through, although a minor complaint I have is that I never knew if it was safe to change costumes as there's no real way to track if you've gotten all the new events or not. Thankfully, it is beautiful so I didn't mind too much, but it did make me feel locked out of using any other outfits that had my Sophie look different to some of the special illustrations I was seeing, but as I said, it is a very minor complaint as it does ultimately result in new content, and I feel lucky to have been able to play an even fuller version of the story than I would have if I played the original. There are a few other extras like item and BGM packs and new cauldrons, although I only unlocked one of the extra cauldrons in my playthrough, so I'll have to go back and get more sometime. But it did also end up being one of my most used cauldrons as it gave extra alchemy experience, and I can see that being very useful for those who want to get to better items faster. This leads me to replayability, as there's still plenty I can find and play with in Sophie DX, including fighting its harder enemies in the new DLC area that I unlocked after I finished, unlocking the many recipes new 
and old, seeing more beautiful illustrations by Noko and Yugen by unlocking more scenes, and there's even the new Despair difficulty from his DLC features to try if I want, which probably isn't for me, but is there for those who feel like really getting into the nitty gritty of synthesis. I'd like to maybe find more recipes in Sophie one day, but since I already have Furious and Lydia and Sludi X waiting for me, I've moved on to them for now, with the hope I'll come back to Sophie someday. But there certainly isn't any shortage of things to do in this game if you're looking for something to spend a lot of time with, and with its deep mechanics ready to challenge you in some of its new features, there's plenty to enjoy for every type of Atelier player. As a game that was a hole in my Atelier knowledge for a long time, I'm glad this TX version could give me the push I needed to get into the enjoyable beginning of the Mysterious Trilogy. It featured the game flow I love in Atelier, with its own unique additions and improvements that make it stand out compared to the Lost One. And while some aspects go deeper than others, using everything together created that immersive gameplay that I love so much in Atelier as I ran around unlucky events, gathering things to make items, fusing them all together, and progressing the main story. Looking at it from the point of view of someone who's played most of his recent games too, it was also very interesting to see all the things that have led up to the Atelier we have today, like its visual synthesis elements and the many weird and wonderful ways you can produce and reproduce items. And for those looking to see the roots of newer Atelier games but not go too far back to where things might feel less smooth, the clearer connection between these mechanics make me think that Atelier Sophie might be a good jumping in point for those looking for more Ateliers to play with if you like those visual elements. It was a great game to see progress Atelier's mechanics further, and an enjoyable story to witness for the first time too, so all in all, I'd say Atelier Sophie DX and its new content is a great continuation to the series, and a great way to learn more about the series that has me excited to keep learning more as I keep playing through the Mysterious DX trilogy. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've played Atelier Sophie in any of its forms, and if you have, what did you think of it? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!